Good morning, everybody. TGIF. It's Friday. I know. I hope you've had a great week. It's been a short week, but a fast week. We want to really encourage everybody to just continue to have a great day and have a great weekend. We do have a few things we'd like to share with you on today. The first thing is we release our first of many promotional videos to really share, highlight our story here in Clayton County Public Schools. We noticed the AJC picked up the article. We released the video on Tuesday night at the board meeting and subsequently to all of our stakeholders and the feedback has been very encouraging, very positive. I hope that you've taken time out to review the video and to basically uh, begin to become more immersed in what we're doing here in Clayton County and hopefully it, it instills in all of us a sense of pride, a sense of expectation toward uh, high performance as we're all working on that. Yes, we've got some ways to go, but we should celebrate along the journey. We'd like to thank our uh, students who read all summer for doing such a phenomenal job and the women of Clayton who recognized many of our students last night from the, all the schools and the school system. Congratulations to the students who many read 40, 50 books. Congratulations to the parents who clearly, clearly are important to creating a climate, a culture, an environment of learning and reading in the home. And of course to our teachers, to our media specialists who were so instrumental and leading and supporting that initiative. So again, to our media specialists, thank you for all that you do. You're one of those quiet forces that we have in our school system. We could not do it without you. And of course, to our teachers who always, always provide our students an opportunity to learn and to be engaged at higher levels. And again, to the women of Clayton, thank you for being a partner in this journey. We'd like to commend our teachers who have participated in the critical conversations, the teacher advisory, the impact conversations. It's just so important and so refreshing to see those come out, all of you come out and be a part, share ideas, concerns with us. Please know that we are working on de developing a response to the concerns that were shared and we'll be sending that out to everyone. So even if you were not there, if you've not looked at the video online, you will be able to see a response to the various concerns uh, that or questions that were uh, highlighted or that came up at the meeting. But thank you to everyone who participated and we hope that you see this as our effort, one of our efforts to remain transparent, to give you an opportunity to inform our uh, conversation as we make good decisions in the best interest of all. Our next critical conversation will be September 18th at 6 p.m., located at the South Clayton Recreation Center in Hampton, Georgia. So we encourage everyone to, uh, if you have nothing else on your schedule to do, uh, make time to come out and be a part of that critical conversation. We're very pleased that the community is really coming out to support those conversations. You know, often I hear different uh, people say things, and so someone said, well, we appreciate the critical conversations, but now we want to do something fun. So now I've got the team working on a few fun things. Uh, and it's always great. I appreciate the community sharing uh, their support, attending, participating. But when they want to do something fun, I'm good with fun. And so now we're working on a few district-wide fun events. And we'll keep everyone posted as we plan these fun type events. We want to remind everyone to check the, uh, the website. I have the website going here on my screen here, uh, my panel, which is a pretty nice panel, but don't forget to check the website. If just in case you don't know, we have all the critical links right here, and there's a link for critical conversations. So check the website and uh, keep up with the list or the meetings of critical conversations and superintendent advisories. We want everyone to save the date. We'll be sending out a save the date announcement for the state of the schools, which is January 29th of, of, of the new year. January 29th, it will be at the uh, Performing Arts Center at 6 p.m., but we just want everybody to save the date. This will be our second state of the schools event, and we're really encouraging our teachers, our uh, employees, our parents, our students to come out, and let's fill the pack as we as a community rally around uh, the educational process that's occurring here in Clayton County. Now let's talk about instruction for a minute or two. 
I'd like to really thank the Curriculum Instruction and Assessment Department for all the work that they're doing to uh, support what needs to occur in the classroom. The framework is clearly uh, one of the best that I've seen. I'm very, very encouraged that all of us are becoming more familiar with the components of, of effective instruction relative to setting the stage for learning, applying learning, preparing for student application, and reflection and the assessment of learning. So I want to encourage all of us, and I'll tell everyone, and I've shared this consistently, you must plan in a collaborative environment. We all have ideas, and collectively, we can really plan to move our students forward. Those of you that have looked at the strategic plan, there are targets. In order to achieve those targets, we've got to be very collaborative, and we've got to be very, very, very intentional. The goal is to shift our students from beginning and developing levels to proficient and distinguished levels on the Georgia Milestone. But not only on the Georgia Milestone, and I'll say something about the Georgia Milestones in a, in a second, but it's so important that our students address the gaps that they have in reading and math. We want our students reading and doing math on or above grade level. We want them to be successful in all content areas. We've noticed, according to our data, about 60% of our students are reading probably 55 to 60 percent are reading on or above grade level according to the GMAS and we've got about 25 percent proficient so we've got a little gap there so the students can read on or above grade level according to a more rigorous assessment but we've got a little gap in proficiency levels then the question is what can we do to fundamentally ensure that those kids who are reading at least on or above grade level are proficient in their content that's not necessarily uh, a question that I can answer and all the way far removed from the classroom as superintendent but that's a question that every teacher every group of teachers all the third grade or fourth grade teachers all the math teachers all the science teachers all the subject matter teachers those are questions that you you've got to ask yourselves in your various uh, collaborative planning sessions we can do this always remember we can do this we know we can do it we have the proficiency we have the not content knowledge we have the pedagogy skills we can do this and so think about those students figure out who they are you have your data figure out who they are figure out what they need and just work every day every day consistently as I know you have done and you'll continue to do to get those students what they need. Look at the areas, look at your domains, look at the areas in which we may have dipped a little bit. We didn't do a whole lot of dipping. We did more increasing than dipping, and even when we dipped a little, it was only one percentage point. But look at the areas in which we dipped and figure out instructionally uh, what do we need to do to ramp up in those areas to ensure that our students are learning the content. We're very pleased with the rigor and relevance framework. We know everybody's moving from quadrant A to B to C to D, and we know that the goal is to get to that quadrant, quadrant D as soon as we can and to remain in quad, quadrant D as often as we can. Can we always be in quadrant D? Of course not. That doesn't acknowledge the reality of, of, of the instructional process, but we do know an effective instructional process takes us from quadrant A to quadrant D and as we're improving our outcomes we'll spend more time in quadrant D so thank you to all the teachers who are working collaboratively that's what it takes remember the solution is not just one person the solution is all of us around the table now relative to the Georgia milestones we are considering we are exploring right now being a pilot district to move away from the Georgia milestones in order to do that We've got to participate in the Georgia Innovative Assessment Pilot, where basically we identify a formative assessment, which we would prefer to use throughout the year, that allows us to assess how our students are learning the content standards, to what degree they're learning the content standards, and then using that assessment information to inform our instructional decisions. Once we are in a position and approved to be a part of this pilot, then that at some point in this pilot we will not have to take the Georgia milestones we believe we believe fundamentally that the instructional process is about growing students so we would rather have data as we go through the instructional process to help us grow our students and so we're preparing a, a news release about our efforts relative to the Georgia innovation 
uh, assessment pilot just to keep everyone informed so more to come in the upcoming days. Next, SPLOS, Special Purpose Local Option Sales Tax. All of you know, all of you should know by now we're in SPLOS 5. It sunsets in December of 2019. We're building new schools. We've got HVAC improvements of, of which many of you are experiencing a hopefully better cool, cool, cooled environment such as Lovejoy High School. We are so thankful for SPLOS 5. But as you well know, voters have to vote if we need to continue, if they would like to continue uh, the, the various construction projects funded by SPLOS. And so SPLOS 6 is what we're looking for toward now. The vote for SPLOS 6 will be March 19th of 2019. March 19th of 2019, we will be sending out a blast consistently throughout uh, this semester and as we uh, approach March 19th of early next year to inform the public what we can and cannot do. We as school, as, as system employees and our roles, we cannot tell people how to vote. All we can tell you, all I will tell you is that these are the projects that are planned for SPLOS 6. If the ref referendum passes, we'll get the resources we need to fulfill the project list. If the referendum fails, then we will not get what we need and we, there, there are no other options. And so that's the extent of what I can say relative to SPLOS, what the intention is with the funds, but if it passes, we can get it done. If it fails, we have no other plan to get those projects done. So I just want to remind everyone again, information will be coming out. It will be the vote for SPLOS 6 will be on March 19th of 2019, we would just encourage all of us, fulfill your civic responsibility and get out and vote. Get out and vote. Get out and vote. Don't just vote in March. Vote on November 6th too. November 6th of this semester. I can't tell you who to vote for. I know who I'm voting for, but you get out and vote. And then of course our Munis. All of you should know by now, you should be able to see the Munis updates as you log into the portal that we will be moving to semi-monthly pay in January of 2019, the same month that we will be doing the State of the Schools Address, the same month in which we'll come back after the, the winter holiday. Don't forget what you got to do. You've got to work with your bill collectors and make some adjustments because you'll get some of your pay, half of your pay on one day, half of the month, and I believe mid-month, and then you'll get the other pay at the end of the month. So you got to make that adjustment. All of us have got to make that adjustment. And you've got to work with your bill collectors. Those of you who don't have any bill collectors, kudos to you. I wish I was among the group, but that is not the case. But those of us who do, work with them to make that adjustment. Well, as we close, we just like to say, it's the fifth week of school. We're ending the fifth week of school. We are headed in the right direction. I just want everybody to know, don't forget to go to our Commitment to High Performance webpage. Look at the magazines that are out there, the goals, the video, the pr presentation. We've defined it for our community, our goals. Increase academic achievement. Number two, provide a safe learning environment. Number three, promote engagement and communication. Number four, provide high quality support services. Number five, recruit, retain qualified and effective staff. And our action steps are there. So we just want to encourage everybody. We, are, we know where we're headed. It won't happen overnight. Be patient with each other. Work with each other. As we move toward high performance, all of us have to be high performing individuals, creating a high performing culture. And it's just a matter of time, a matter of time before we see the results not only increase, but we'll build on that momentum and we'll see even the increases will increase because we're doing it the right way. Focused on our children, teaching them every day at a very rigorous level, providing support, providing feedback, giving them an opportunity to address whatever uh, reading or math deficits that they, they have, working collaboratively, planning for high levels of effective instruction. It's just a matter of time. So I hope, again, you've had a great week. Have a great weekend. We'll see you the next time. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy.